All right, I'm going to call to order the Monday, November 4th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. <coughs> uh, first up this evening, we have a continued hearing for uh, environmental design review, special permit number 3348 application by Gary McCoy of McCoy and Signs for CVS at 833 Mass Ave. Uh, <coughs> Mr. McCoy, if you could come forward just a minute. Uh, I understand there is uh, some desire on the public's part to speak this evening. You can have a seat. That's oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Sorry. No, come forward. Actually, my seat. name is Chris Ram. I'm representing. All right. Going on. Have, you can have a seat up here, and, and we'll, we'll go through it. Um, there is sort of an associated <coughs> issue with the CVS, which you may or may not know about, concerning the house to the right of it. Okay, yep. it. It's called the Atwood House. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> this board has control over both of these buildings as they're part of the same special permit. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people in the audience this evening who are going to want to speak about the Atwood House. I'm going to allow it. Sure. Uh, I would remind the folks in the audience tonight that as you speak, this gentleman has no control or authority over uh, the Atwood House and no ability to make a decision. He's here to discuss uh, CVS and primarily sign changes and internal changes. So please keep that in mind. I will allow you to speak. I just want to uh, not take it out on this gentleman who's just here. Uh, Nothing to do with it. CVS. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we had continued this hearing previously, so I'm opening that up here. Uh, this evening, but if you could take us uh, a minute here, I think the board itself is also going to have some comments as to the Atwood House and mm -hmm. some things that may or may not be requested of CVS as part of this process. Uh, this is just to give you some background. This is a long standing issue in the town, uh, one which residents and this board feel strongly about. Uh, we appreciate your hard work, and we don't mean to put you in a position where you shouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily feel was, like you should I, be put, but uh, the, a lot. I'm just sort of preparing you that a lot of those discussions sure. are going to come up. You may not get a decision this evening, depending right. on Right. I just the understanding that that was the landlord had already come in and addressed a lot of these The landlord concerns. did come in, and we had a conversation with the landlord, and I don't think that this board is particularly satisfied about some of the answers okay. that we got. Uh, you know, understanding that this is the redevelopment board, it's not necessarily our place and our authority to enforce a special permit. It's still our special permit, and if enforcement isn't taking place, then uh, it's up to us to look at the conditions of the entire special permit and, and make an appropriate decision. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a building that's created a lot of uh, <coughs> uh, intense discussion over the last several years. And uh, unfortunately for you, it just so happens that with CVS asking for the special permit to be reopened, mm -hmm. it's given us an opportunity to have a, a long, long overdue conversation with the building owner and the landlord. Okay. So just uh, wanted to give you some history there and prepare you for that. It's nothing personal with you and your, I don't, your yeah, I don't understand why. why so. That's fine. I'll sit and listen. Yeah. I just don't so, have any. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I will. I, again, I will ask the the, yeah. the folks in the audience when they speak to, to keep that in mind as well. Sure. That that uh, their comments. I'm going to allow their comments for the record, mm -hmm. uh, and they, they can direct them as they see fit, but not at you. Sure. So, okay. So go ahead. Please show us what you've got and, and tell us what you're here asking for. Uh, well, basically, for CVS throughout the country, really. Um, we're just trying to uh, upgrade their signage to their new logo on their signs. We're not looking to really replace anything, I'm, or should I say improve anything. We're going one for one with the signage, and um, and that's it. And I think we were adding one, if I read it correctly, we were adding one, um, I'm sorry. I just read through it, so I know this. I think uh, one do not enter sign. You know, other than that, it's pretty much okay. sign for sign, one for one. Yeah. Um, personally, I think I, I think it's a fine. You don't have any issue with any of the signs. I'll defer to other members of the board for for comments. I'll begin down at the other end of the table this evening with Rachel. Um, I I too I don't have any issue with the specific signs. I I do think that there is. Um, an issue in reopening the special permit with the lack of attention and the lack of follow-through 
with what was um, originally required of the special permit of the, the Atwood house on the, okay. on the property. Go ahead, Jim. I missed the meeting the last time CVS was here, mm -hmm. but I watched the video online, so I am able to discuss it and vote on it. I also missed the meeting where the Atwood house was discussed, but I did watch that online too, so I am able to um, discuss and vote on that one also. I do have one question related to the site plan, mm -hmm. which is, I think, this. Yep. So can you bring that up for a second? So when I went over to CBS today, I noticed there's a sign that's not on the site plan, and the sign is right here. Okay. And the sign points that way, and it says drive drive in or drive through or whatever okay whatever it exactly says there so there's a sign missing from you? the side plane it's um a directional sign i if, suppose if yep. you see right here there's a sign right here that's about this big with an arrow pointing that way that says drive in or drive, drive through, through. Mm -hmm. or whatever it is and it's not shown on the site plan. I'll make sure I make a note of that. So if we were to approve this, I think we would need to just probably add that into the signage that's I think we could make that a condition yeah. <coughs> where we yeah. would have that sign indicated on revised site plan. Right. Assuming uh, that's uh, that's yeah. other than the whole Atwood House issue, that was my only real comment on this. Sure. David. I had no additional comments uh, regarding the signage. Uh, I also agree with my colleagues that we would like to see uh, a resolution to the issues with the Atwood House property. I would as well. <laughs> Kip. Yeah, I have um, no no issues with the signage. I know your rebranding mm -hmm. and, and the signings that you have for this rebranding is fine. Um, um, I've been thinking long and hard about this, and I, I, I think we have to somehow, amongst us members today, come up with a fair and reasonable solution where it doesn't drag you through this all the time. Mm. You've been here twice already, and uh, to be fair to you, and to your company, and CBS, but also there's other issues there. Understood. With the outhouse. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I think we should talk about amongst ourselves. Yeah, I think what I'll, what I'll do is turn to the public and allow for public comments. Okay. And then we can deliberate. Okay, that sounds fine. Then we, I could talk a little more about that. Okay. Some of my feelings about how we should go about this. Sure. Yeah, thank you. At least my opinion. <laughs> go ahead, Jenny. So in addition to that one extra sign that was noted by Mr. Benson, the other thing that is actually different than in the original application that was approved is the landscaping that was supposed to be installed in front of the building between the building and the sidewalk Okay. was never installed. I don't know if it had been installed previously and then removed at some point in time, but that would be, okay, I, would I was not aware of that. That was that a CVS thing? It's a CVS thing. Okay. Yeah. So All right, it's just one, one other thing that we would want to put into yep. a condition to ensure that that's actually installed. Mm -hmm. That was another condition of the original of the special original permit. permit and on their original plan. Okay. Landscaping between the front of the building and the sidewalk, which was never installed. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, I don't know where exactly that would go, but it is on the site plan that was approved at the time mm -hmm. that the decision was issued. So we can discuss that further. I don't know if that would be tonight, but that was one other one other note. Is that okay. all hardscape there in front of the building? It is yeah, all hardscape, yes. Yeah, so it was paid right through the building and there's a couple of benches there. Yes. Yep. Supposed to mm. have landscaping. I mean unless it was it's in between the parking lot, there's some bushes and up there, but I'm not familiar with it, yeah, so it that would be a CBS walk. thing more the so than right the that would be there was there was the the CBS. Yeah. We would add that in, I think, to any special permit okay. condition. So at this point, I'll open it up yeah. to the public. Please keep in mind the direction I gave at the beginning of the meeting. Again, this gentleman has no decision making authority <clears throat> with CBS, but uh, the five of us are happy to listen to, to what's out there and what you have to say. So 
Uh, Mr. Warden, I see your hand about to go up, so I'll call on you first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> um, well, I, I, uh, I sent uh, last, uh, um, last week or so a, a, a group of papers uh, to the board, uh, since none of you were on the board when, it, uh, when this originally happened ten years ago. And uh, I trust you've all uh, looked at the permit, the uh, special permit that was uh, issued uh, to for this whole project of CVS and the Atwood House. And the permit, uh, and I quoted particularly in the, the 2010 memo to the board, um, the specific uh, provisions that related to the Atwood House were very strong about the house was to be used uh, for some useful purpose and so on. And, um, um, and then it said that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the um, owner, um, it said, well, he wanted to get the CVS underway uh, first, and then he did think about the Atwood House. Well, it's not about it for 10 years. And, uh, and meanwhile, uh, they, then they're, they, they're the owner and the, his lawyer came in a month ago, as you will recall, <coughs> and they, they're questioning the, the, um, uh, the, the structural stability of the house and so on. And, um, and in quoting just a single, per, a single line out of that decision, it said no uh, motion or no application for the destruction of the house could be made within two years and, and just overlooked all, all the other things about the house and how the board and the public and everybody involved thought that it was soon going to be developed into, into something useful. And in fact, I, I was working with David Levy, the then president of the um, of the uh, uh, Arlington Housing Corporation, Housing Corporation of Arlington, um, and he had lined up preliminary funding and so on to uh, to convert that the building into affordable apartments and, and to also put a, a wing on the back of it to accommodate a, a larger number of units. And in fact, the permanent, you know, sets aside some parking places behind the house for that purpose. Well. What happened is he was ready to go, and the, and the, the landlord said, well, I will only give you a 10-year lease. And, and that, 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 that would not have allowed them to, to you know, make, make it financially feasible for the investment they would have to make to do that. So, and so, so, so they, the 10 years go and they do nothing. For, sometimes they didn't even shovel the sidewalk. Um, they, they let it be broken into. It's boarded up. You're not supposed to have boarded up buildings in commercial areas, but it's boarded up, as you know. Um, there's been a certain amount of vandalism, and others saying, "Well, maybe it's uh, maybe it's too unstable because because we let it go so long." It reminds me of the story of the, the young fellow who killed his parents, and then when he got to court, he threw himself in the mercy of the judge and said, "I'm an orphan." <laughs> uh, that doesn't wash. It's, it's a self, as all lawyers know, a, a self-inflicted harm to get you off the hook. So I, I would urge the board to say you don't have enforcement. Somebody must have some enforcement authority. Uh, I have written to uh, one of the letters I sent to you about three years ago was to the building inspector asking him to do some enforcement. That was particularly in the board, boarding up issue. But somebody must be able to do something to make the promises and the undertakings and the decision of this board 10 years ago uh, happen because that, that's an important part, and, and Mr. Atwood is going to speak to the, uh, some of the history of it, but uh, just uh, very briefly, Dr. Atwood, who, after whom the house is named, although he wasn't the first owner, uh, and uh, later uh, Bob Carey, some of you may have known him, and Mike, uh, um, uh, Mike Foley, some of you may have known Mike. Um, these were doctors who served the town, served the town well, had their offices in that building, and, and not only did they, take care of us when we were sick, but, but um, they, they, they lived in the town and, and they took part in, 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 its, in its public affairs. And you don't see a lot of doctors doing that these days. So th this is important for, for various reasons, and I, I hope you will see that something is done about it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Atwood. Well, I'd only like to uh, add to what <coughs> Mr. Worden said. <coughs> could, you, uh, and, could you introduce yourself for the record? Yes, and, um, I'm John Atwood, and I'm the grandson of Dr. Atwood, who lived and practiced medicine in that house for nearly 50 years. And uh, 
I came here today merely to offer some uh, comments on the historical context. Uh, and I also have uh, three photos which I'd like to show you. <coughs> We'd also like an address. I'm reminded by his okay. rate an address just for our records, please. You want that now? Or? Yes. Okay, now I have an apartment here in Arlington. I'm frequently here, but my primary residence is in Arlington, Virginia. I work for the government then. So you want which which one do you want? I have email. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take your primary address, please. Uh, 523 North Oakland Street. <coughs> Arlington, Virginia, 22203. Thank you. And I have email. So if I may just uh, I'll try to be brief, give some history of the, of the house and, and uh, Dr. Atwood. Um, uh, he was uh, grew up in Rhode Island uh, on the family farm and uh, ironically not too far from the CVS offices today. <coughs> anyway, he, he then went to uh, Harvard College and Harvard Med School graduated from medical school in 1900. Uh, in the same year, he married his high school sweetheart, Ada Gordon, who had also gone to high school with him down in Rhode Island. <coughs> and uh, so when he was about to begin his career, in 1900 plus his internship, he looked around for a pleasant and promising place to begin his career, and he settled on, on Arlington. And so he came here, I'm not sure of the exact date, but I'm positive he was here before 1906. And then when my uncles and father started being born uh, from 1908 to 1914, so, uh, my father uh, and uh, his two brothers, anyway, they all lived there in, in that house. Dr. Atwood was, was very active uh, in his profession uh, with Sims Hospital a lot, and uh, I think he was town physician at one point on the Board of Health. And uh, many years later, uh, Sims, before its demise, uh, created a gallery of honored physicians. This was mainly people who'd been instrumental in the founding and working of Sims Hospital through the years. And uh, they invited families such as ours, the physicians, most of whom were deceased, to submit uh, portraits or photo pictures of the doctors, which, which we did. Uh, that event in the 70s was covered. It showed me and my mother uh, presenting uh, Dr. Atwood's uh, picture. <coughs> and um, so that moving on to the, uh, <coughs> the house itself, uh, it was really elegant in its day. And uh, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's uh, shameful what's happened. Inside, for instance, there was a wide uh, <coughs> two tier staircase with a landing in the middle of it, my grandmother aunt would always used to say that Mr. Billifer, the woodworker, had done that. And I know there are a lot of Billifers in Arlington, probably still are. And uh, at the landing where it turned a second time to go up to the second floor was this beautiful stained glass window. And uh, so that now has all been smashed, obviously, by vandalism. And when boards were finally put up on the bottom windows, none were put uh, above that. And I mean, the, the, of all the windows in the house, that would have been the most significant one to protect. It's completely destroyed. It's gone. And uh, the lovely garden which they had out back is now paved over as a parking lot. So <coughs> yes, changes happen. And so what, what happened uh, in 1952 is uh, Dr. Atwood uh, suffered a stroke. And he, uh, he had to go to a nursing home from which he never returned. And uh, my two uncles, my father being dead, <clears throat> and their mother, my grandmother, uh, considered what would be a proper disposition of the house where they were raised and Dr. Atwood had practiced. And uh, my uncle Bob Atwood was a good friend of uh, Dr. William McCarty, who was the son of the legendary track coach in Arlington, Doc McCarty. And uh, so Dr. McCarty <clears throat> said that, well, he would create, in effect, a medical center, having doctors there. And so all the family thought that was an excellent disposition and, and tribute to Dr. Howard and so on. And so that was uh, how it came to pass that, that the house was sold from the house to Dr. McCarty. And uh, at first it worked well, doctors came in and so on. And then, unfortunately, Dr. McCarty died young. And uh, ever since then, it's, it's been uh, <coughs> complete uh, unsettled. So uh, that was basically the, uh, 
some of the, the history and <coughs> up to date of the sale, and uh, you're familiar, and Mr. Wardman has uh, explained what, what's happened, you know, since it went out of the Outlet family. So I realize it's very difficult to balance the public and private interests here and economic and, and, and practical, uh, but um, I, I think the House is um, unquestionably of historical significance uh, to the town of Wellington, mm -hmm. uh, and, and both for the, the story it, it represents <coughs> of that period in time and uh, for the architecture. I mean, just uh, today I went around and, and looked at uh, four of the iconic structures here, the Jarvis House on Pleasant Street, the Wayside Inn on 393 Mass Ave, the Dallin uh, Cutter House, and of course the Jason Russell House. And uh, those are good examples of colonial architecture and federal. Um, this is later, maybe uh, Art Nouveau. I don't know what you call it exactly. But I, I think it would be important because of the, uh, <coughs> the prominence of, of that house on what's really the main street in our town, that it, it should, the house should definitely be, be um, preserved. I mean, there should at least be a, a plaque or a marker or something there. And I know it's very difficult to find uh, a use for it. I mean, ideally, if a, a doctor would <laughs> appear and want to be there, it would be great. I thought of, you know, is there any type of partnership? Do, do these other building houses I just mentioned, each one of them has a different history, and I suppose you've considered that, but, you know, uh, what the status of the ownership is, what the status of the usage is, like the Wayside Inn, that's a, a, like a hidden gem, really. You, you can't even see the plaque. That, that was uh, as old as the Jason Russell House, and it's in quite good shape. And, you know, how does this come about? So uh, I would only urge that uh, consideration be given to, to indeed the historical significance architecturally, socially, uh, and, uh, I mean, uh, the family did a lot for the town. One interesting thing, perhaps, was uh, <clears throat> my grandmother, I would, I think she was maybe the first woman town meeting member, certainly uh, one of them, I'm pretty sure. And um, <coughs> so it, it's, uh, as I say, we've, we've had a century of experience there, and, and uh, um, I guess that would be my concluding mark that it, it really is historically significant, and I hope that somehow the, the house will be preserved, and, and I, I understand the challenge in finding the, the useful aspect. I think that the preservation is pretty much a given, but the usefulness is very difficult. But uh, it has not been well maintained. I've gone over there, including today. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, the deal needs to be more honored. So with that, I will thank you. Thank you. Other Andrew, people. can I add something? Mm -hmm. One more? Go yes. ahead. Sure. Um, just to follow up on what you just said there. Um, I did go by that um, building maybe a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And uh, through the history of the building, there's also another stent where it was a dentist's office. It's what? A dentist's office. Yeah. Oh, well, that would okay. be good. In and fact, well, we like the idea of the pharmacy being next door. Well, well, I'm just saying, well, it was a dentist's office. That's good. It took a lot of liberties in, in transforming what was very, a very grand house at one time, okay? okay. Yes, well, I gave you the photograph. Of yes, the, and the I'm saying... I I'm actually just, lived there my first year in high school when, when my grandfather became sick. My mother and I moved in, but, uh, but a lot it of was those, a lovely place. But a lot of those details you're talking about on the inside, yes, yes, are not there anymore. I'm sorry to say. Another okay. challenge. And you know where they bolted the um, the chairs down with the around the plumbing and the hydraulics and all that stuff. It's still like a, a mess of strudel in there. Okay. Just, just, just. I'm just want to follow up on that's all. Yes. Uh, right. Just, it's right. just so that it, it has transformed. Yeah, that's all. That's true. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, hi. My name is uh, David Baldwin. Uh, I'm here to speak uh, just briefly. Six real brief points. Could you give us your address? Oh, well, yes, please. 49 Academy Street. Thank you. Um, I'm a member of the Arlington Historic District Commission, uh, former member of the Historical Commission, uh, former chair of the Sh Old Schwann Mill Trustees former president of the Arlington Historical Society. I've uh, been around for a while. Um, in entering the town from Cambridge, uh, you, you come across the sign very prominent that says, Welcome to Historic Arlington. Um, unfortunately, prosperity has not helped preserve Arlington's history. Uh, most of our 17th, 18th, 
and a good part of our 19th century uh, structures have been either moved or demolished. So what is left is more important uh, to us that since again development has has brought uh, has done away with the others. Um, if Arlington is to on one hand be promoting history we should not be on the other hand raising the historic structures. Um, I guess in conclusion I've, I firmly believe that we're all stewards of the historic past and it's up to us uh, to make a stand for historic buildings and this is the legacy that we leave to the future. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Wagner. Thank you. I'm Carl Wagner, 38 Hill Road in Arlington, Mass. Um, I wanted to thank the uh, ARB and the citizens for the October 7th meeting that I attended where the discussion was made uh, of the Atwood House and, and it brought back a lot of things that just about 42,000 people in Arlington wanted to hear which is why is that house next to CVS in such bad shape always because it seems like all my life it's been in bad shape and I understand that this body may not be able to do enforcement but I hope that Arlingtonians will reach out to the inspectional or enforcement services and get that house taken care of before something awful happens and I hope that the work that this group is doing with the, the owners and the citizens can, can make it better. Um, I, I'd like to say that it, 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 I learned on the October 7th meeting, uh, I think thanks to Chris Loretti, but also perhaps to members of the board speaking, that uh, the 10 years ago uh, instructions were given to the owners or the users of that site, they must not knock it down. And uh, that's really important for people in Arlington to know that the original ARB instruction was don't knock it down, work with it, build from it, or something like that. And uh, as I walk uh, along the line with David's comments, as I walk past um, the Whole Foods on the opposite side, you get to nice church. I think it's a Baptist church, and there's grass. You can all see it in your minds if you close your eyes. And then there's the house, which could be what the grandson of the owner has said was wonderful. We could use the photos. We could learn from it and get details. And then you get, essentially, in that grass and that Atwood house, you get a sign, a free sign for CVS, because it goes church, wood frame house and there's the best store in Arlington uh, at least for the purposes of this meeting right and then you've got the old historic high school right after and a tastefully done parking lot by CVS by the way so it looks and feels like a nice town area and it talks about history but it also talks about people walking and using things in a, in a nice uh, public transit friendly get out of your house and walk around instead of being a big bad urban environment. So this is all really good and it, it, it's the right vibe. Unfortunately, 887 Mass Ave, the Kearney building is a disaster. And part of the reason I come to meetings like this now is because I understand that this board made 887 better than it could have been by law. Uh, well, 887 is pretty awful. That's the white building on the other side of the high school. Please, whatever we do, keep in mind what the Atwood House was and could be and how it fits into CVS and the church and the feeling of our town. And then keep in mind also what 887 came out to the rest of us, even, even if, if it was done legally. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Peter Bloom, uh, Jason Terrace, 15 Jason Terrace. Um, I've been really discouraged watching what's happened to that house over the years. I'm a neighbor. I live around the corner from the Atwood House. Uh, it's just been really depressing seeing what's gone on there. And... Uh, yeah, it's, it's part of a streetscape I've always admired, especially going east uh, towards the church that uh, he was just referring to. And uh, now, I mean, it just, it just looks like the backdrop for any number of assaults <coughs> or drug overdoses you might see on any six o'clock news. Um, and I don't understand how this could, could have been allowed to go on for such a long time. And I really hope that uh, you can all do whatever you can to, to try and turn this around and not let the house basically just collapse by default. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to that? I'm going to close public <coughs> comment. If, if I could actually just add one little note to that that I forgot to mention. I mean, I, you know, we, we're, we're losing the high school's architecture. And that, that to, you know, to me, it's a, a really unfortunate loss uh, for the streetscape. And it makes the Atwood property that much more valuable to me uh, as a neighbor and as a, a citizen of this town. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to close public comment for the time being, seeing that anyone else wishes to speak and turn it back to the board to deliberate how to move forward here, keeping in mind that what's before us is 
separate from the issues at the Atwood House, and uh, we may be limited in what we're able to do and decide tonight. So, um, I guess I'll begin with Jean, since I so rarely begin with Jean. I don't think I have anything to add to what other people have said. I just don't know if there's any way for us to connect the, the um, application that's in front of us to what the condition of the Abbott House is. Um, I don't know if anybody knows whether we can do that, but I don't know that we can can do it. I don't know if we can somehow condition the sign permit on something because we're not going to see something for the for the Atwood House for I don't know how long. So um, I'm interested to hear whether other people have um, some ideas about it because other than what Ms. Wright mentioned about the greenery in front and what I mentioned about the missing sign on the um, drawing, mm -hmm. I don't I don't see how we do anything other than approve the change in signage that they suggested. Um, I was sorry I missed the meeting on October 7, because I was going to suggest that um, we look into the possibility with the building inspector of getting that wood house condemned and maybe doing a taking by the town of the house. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's the subject for this. No, meeting. I think I would defer to the building inspector and town council yeah. as to that. Right. Right. Um, I've given this <clears throat> a considerable amount of thought, and, and I've been on the board for six or seven years at this point, and only one other time have we been asked to reopen a special permit where there are other conditions that aren't being lived up to. Uh, every other time a, a reopening of a special permit has come before us, the applicant has been, or the, or the landowner, as the case may be, has lived up to the condition, general conditions and special conditions put forth uh, by the special permit. This is sort of a unique case mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> where you have CVS on the one hand that, as far as anyone can tell, has been an excellent neighbor to the town. Uh, I've gone back through the history of that decision. I think people were concerned about the CVS building at the time, but it's it's become a part of that block of Mass Ave, as the gentleman in the back said. Uh, and I don't necessarily think it's entirely reasonable to uh, keep CVS down from, from moving forward because of this other situation. However, the special permit is what the special permit is. Mm -hmm. uh, and when enforcement isn't taking place, it's up to some other entity to, to manage that. Um, at the very minimum, the, the special permit laid out in special condition number five, that it's reasonable and diligent efforts shall be used to maintain its present condition to prevent any damage from the elements or otherwise until it's redeveloped. It doesn't put a time frame on that. It doesn't put uh, <clears throat> a plan in place. It does say that the owner has to come back before us before anything does take place, but nothing's taken place in the last mm -hmm. 10 years. And so unlike other situations, I feel a little bit more comfortable uh, telling CVS, hold off until we get something here. Uh, this is not a situation where, it, back up for a minute, <clears throat> the other time we, we asked the landowner to come in, the property owner to come in, uh, one of the major wireless carriers was looking to put a relay tower on top of a building further up Mass Ave, and there were some issues with the building. What they were proposing was non-invasive, didn't have any impact on the streetscape, didn't have any impact on traffic, but the building owner had been in violation of the special permit for a number of years, and again, it had gone on unenforced. We had the building owner come in and deal with things like traffic, and uh, particularly parking and storage mm -hmm. on the site. <clears throat> and it wasn't until the building owner came in and made certain commitments to live up to the terms of the special permit that this board, uh, none of whom of these members were there when this happened, I don't think, uh, felt comfortable moving forward with a vote right. for the special permit. This is a much more severe case. And again, I'm, I'm speaking to you, but I'm only, I'm only speaking to you because you're the person who's going to go mm -hmm. back and talk to CBS. Um, <clears throat> the historical and 
cultural implications of that house notwithstanding. That sounds sounds. It well, has been definitely deserved to be saved. That, that is another board's purview to determine and what should be done there. And, and I don't want to weigh in on that this evening. The house is falling down. The windows are cracked. There are people climbing in and out of there at all hours of the night. Um, I'm concerned for not only the safety of people that may go in and out of there, but the church next door mm -hmm. and the CVS on the other side, whatever else might be there should something happen to that house. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what we have here is an absentee property owner who came in a month ago and told us that uh, through his attorney that they were looking at options. But uh, a month later, we have nothing further right. from them. And as Mr. Lau mentioned earlier, he went into the house and it's much worse on the inside mm -hmm. than it is on the outside. Well, if unfortunately, what I, what, what, what's happening is you're punishing. I get what you're trying to do, and I'd like to see it, but yeah. who's really getting And I understand that. And here that's us that point on signs of CVS. And yeah, and I'm sure no that you have your own that. considerations <laughs> of that, and I understand that you have no control, but right. um, <clears throat> there, I think there are some questions for town council and some other uh, entities in town about what to do and how to proceed. Uh, I certainly don't want to cause undue hardship to people that aren't causing the problem uh, but as a longtime tenant uh, of the ownership maybe CPS has some influence mm -hmm. over Mr. Noyce and how this property might be managed and okay. taken care of um, at least cleaned up so that it's not in the situation that it is and, and you know again I apologize for sort of browbeating you on that topic, but I think it's important. Not what what happens with it is remains to be seen, mm -hmm. but uh, it can't ex continue to exist in its current state. That's, that's what I'll have to say, David. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was comfortable taking the opportunity presented by reopening the special permit to, uh, to try to uh, address uh, the issues with the Atwood House in the first instance, but I'm I'm not so comfortable continuing to to um, to stall CVS from moving forward with with the signage, and I'm uh, I'm struggling with it, um, and it, part of what I'm struggling with is uh, regardless of what pressure CVS might be able to exert on noise. Um, uh, any kind of redevelopment of the site um, is going to take a while uh, to work through that process, mm -hmm. even if reasonable progress is being made towards something. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, so are we going to are we going to hold off on issuing? C the, the permit for CVS's signage for potentially years in order to maintain leverage <coughs> to make sure that that process continues? Or do we have another alternative? Because uh, the owner has clearly violated the conditions of the original special permit. So, and there's, there is what on the face of it seems like a pretty strong enforcement clause in the original special permit I mean, is there anything else that the town, maybe not this board, but that the town can do from an enforcement perspective to put pressure on on the owner to uh, to do something to at least maintain the condition of that property, mm -hmm. so that we could allow CBS to just move yeah, forward? I, I don't think we'd be having this conversation if we knew the answer to that question, and that's that's sort of what we're here for, but. Yeah. Uh, is a little bit outside of, of what our role should be. Well, who who well, can so answer that I, question? I, yeah, so, the building inspector and town council. Yeah, so before I reopened the special permit, I spoke with town council, I spoke with the director of inspectional services, and that is why we reopened this, was so that you could, obviously, this is a sign company, not even CVS, by mm -hmm. the way. It's, no, <laughs> it's I, I understand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just to be clear about that, CVS is applying, but via... Mm -hmm. the sign applicant, which is often the case. We often just have a sign company come here. Um, so there's only so much that we, we haven't talked to anybody at CVS in all of this time. We've only been speaking with the sign company. 
So we, we haven't, we don't have a direct access point to CVS in general, but I'm sure that we could figure out one. That's one possibility, but we reopened it so that you could have the conversation with the property owner and his attorney, which is what occurred. Um, we didn't have a plan of action come out of that meeting. Um, we, we didn't have any terms provided to the property owner in, in terms of saying, we need you to come back in one month to report back on progress and have an action plan. We wanna see these things. I think that that would be a, a reasonable next step. Working with town council, I'm glad to figure out a way to make that happen. But that wasn't something that we discussed at the, or you discussed at the last meeting. Um, I think from my own perspective, it is okay to continue this conversation if you so desire, but it should come with a limit in terms of, to your point, if you're asking for redevelopment, if you're asking to see something happening, it's hard to know exactly how long that timeline is going to take for anything to be executed and how long you continue to hold off on issuing something to a tenant, essentially, of the property owner. Um, so I would be careful about that. Um, in speaking with Doug Heim, the town council, about this, we've looked at this decision. There are a lot of, actually, there's, there's points in it that are not necessarily enforceable. Um, that's something to think about in terms of writing decisions about protecting properties. There are mechanisms that we could use as a town to further protect this property, including a preservation restriction, um, other mechanisms that we might want to put into place, and we can talk about that further maybe at another point in time. But I don't know that it directly relates to this tenant and their desire to install signs and also make interior improvements, which is currently what is being held up. They're yeah. not able to proceed with inspectional services at all at this point in time, and yet, um, you know, they are a business in town. They are trying to do their best in the midst of this challenge that we're talking about. Now, they don't, of course, have that direct challenge with the property <clears throat> owner because they're not dealing with the property owner. They're just a sign company. And you can add if you I have one question, and then I'll let you, and then I'll let you go, Ken. So the general condition number four of the special permit mm -hmm. gives the board <clears throat> continued jurisdiction over the permit. Uh, and it says that after a duly advertised public hearing, we can attach other conditions. That's right. We and could we do that. We don't do that. But well, we, we could we do that. We have done that with other permits that we've reopened. Not necessarily this board right now, but the board has done that. And so the board would theoretically have the opportunity to enter into further discussions mm -hmm. and under its own authority mm -hmm. reopen the special permit and place conditions specifically on the noise property uh <clears throat> the atwood house Correct. to take care of things i have some concerns over that that i'll take up uh, uh outside of a public hearing but i don't think it would be an inappropriate way to act if the board was so inclined um we have we have various ways to enforce things that uh aren't commonly used by this board, uh, one of which we're exercising this evening, but uh, I, I think indefinitely imposing that is not necessarily the most equitable, equitable way to go about these things. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking through this as we're all talking, as I'm sure the rest of you are, but uh, Ken, go ahead and then continue this discussion. Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, like I said, I've been thinking hard about this for a while, mm -hmm. at least my opinion. It was maybe three meetings ago. Yeah, that's a while ago. That I motioned to continue this hearing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I felt really bad <laughs> taking out, taking this out on you at that time, and I said yep. so at the time. Actually, it was probably Gary here okay. at that time. Yeah. And I was saying that at the time, you know. Yeah. And I'm in my opinion right now is to go ahead and approve your sign. Uh, um, docket here. And do what Andy says. We have some authority on the under on the, uh, the a previous approval to reopen it, and we should reopen it and go after the right person, not you, not CVS, just so that people know that you know we treat people fair in this town, and we're not here to, to levy levy other persons or businesses for other people. That's just, I don't think that's just right. I don't like doing business that way. Mm -hmm. um, it just it just sets up a bad uh, perception of what this town is, and um, all the points that we made are good. I I, I definitely want to do something with it, with um, 
the house uh, and you know if we can save it we could save it if we want but not this way mm. so I'm reconsidering what I said earlier about continuing with this and I, I, I think I would like to see what the, what, what the rest of the board say okay let's approve the sign but let's find other avenues to reopen this open this case mm -hmm. and see what we can do about getting this issue fixed by not putting CVS and dragging you as a business owner, a sign company, mm -hmm. here for more than, we already dragged you for two meetings already, there should have been only one. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to thank you for that patience. No, and like I said, I, I feel for all of the speakers, you know, and, and I, I wish we had some kind of leeway, but I'm not even sure CVS would have the leeway, you know, with them. Um, you know, it seems like they have their mind made up of mm -hmm. they may or may not do anything, and yeah. it's just horrible because we have you know, we want to obviously continue with yeah, our business. Yeah, and, and so. you know, to be fair, I think we realize that what you're here asking for is <clears throat> a fairly reasonable minimal ask. Uh, and you've just sort of fallen into a situation where that's a decade mm -hmm. in the making. No, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And <clears throat> you know, we all have to look at this balancing the idea of uh, being fair to business and allowing people to transact business without jumping through hoops and hoops and hoops on the one hand, but B, uh, the idea that property owners can't allow their, their properties to fall into this state of disrepair. Mm. And, you know, and I know it's common practice in other places to really force landlords to, I had a conversation with Rachel earlier today <clears throat> that brought this up where uh, it, it's, it's perfectly reasonable and, and good practice to hold off on a special permit unless and until a landlord acts but I'll let Rachel address that and then we'll continue. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I too, again, um, I see no issue with the, with the signage that's mm -hmm. being proposed. Um, I, I certainly, I, I work with retail brands as an architect and I fully understand the um, speed at which when there's a rebranding effort, it's important to cascade that across your portfolio. Mm -hmm. and I. Uh, so I certainly am sympathetic to, to that. Um, I, I also think that there is an opportunity here for CVS to understand what the challenges are of the property that the, the Atwood House, which is on their property, which is, um, you know, as, as we've talked about, has, has dangerous activity happening within it mm -hmm. adjacent to their patrons coming in and out of, of their property. Mm -hmm. And I think that having worked with many national retailers, they it's important for them to understand what the risks are in any property right. that they that they operate. So I actually think that it would be important to have somebody from CVS potentially attend this hearing to understand what the concerns of the town are right. and to then understand how important it is for them to work together with their landowner mm -hmm. in order to expedite a resolution for their customers mm -hmm. and for for the town so that in my view that would be um, an appropriate next next step in this process i think that's reasonable I just I I had I known we known that we probably would have set that up for tonight. Yeah, no, no, I understand. I think this is all. Um, We're all. It's all part of. I get it. It's very much a, an ongoing process. Yep. Um, <clears throat> is there anyone else on the board that wants to make a comment? Well, do we need to drag him back here again? I, I, again, I, I to me the importance is is for CVS to understand. I think we can vote without him present. Because I think you know, I'm just trying to be fair. Um, no, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not dragging in for We can vote. I think we can close testimony. Don't need the sign company. And I, I think we've heard what we need to hear. Um, I think we can close testimony on behalf of the sign company and at least oral testimony on behalf of the public. Um, but I don't think that having a CVS representative come in at our next meeting would be particularly onerous. And then we could. Um, sort of decide when to vote at that time after we've spoken with CVS or possibly if 
you know, the department and, and one or two of us could have a conversation with CVS mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and, and do that outside well, of the meeting. I mean, maybe the way to do it is, is not to continue this again, but to add another condition to the permit that requires a responsible representative of CVS to come to the next meeting where we put the Atwood House on the agenda. So in, in addition to the two um, conditions that we mentioned earlier, we would add that third condition. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they can go ahead and do all their signage changes, and we will get somebody from CVS at the next meeting we have about where the Atwood House so is let's, on So let's agenda. think about that as a matter of timing and practicality. Um, we have a couple of busy meetings coming up. I think if we were to, if we were to call the noise folks back in, I think we should do it as an additional reopening of the special permit, which would require advertising uh, and expense, and we have to have a date certain <clears throat> for that. I'm certain that their attorney would be uh, willing to come and, and speak to us. Mm -hmm. Well, plus the fact that the attorney said that he hired the attorney, mm -hmm. and they've hired an architect. That's what they stated at the last meeting. Well, let's see what the architect came up with. Yeah. I mean, it, or, or, or was it just all talk? I don't think it hurts to see what, to, to try to fish out their intent. Because um, it's been a month. They should, have, they should have some schematics or some sort of idea by now. They said they wanted to do their own independent review of the structure. Yeah. They should have done that by now. That would mean that they are, they are moving forward. If they have done none of that stuff, then they have not done anything. And then I would feel very comfortable saying, let's, you know, what? Um, you know, this board has not felt, has not dealt with them. We're, we're dealing with them now, so I want to give them a, a little bit of benefit of the doubt. And let, let them prove us, let them prove themselves yeah. one way or the well, other. Well, the, the, the board is currently constituted, has not has not dealt yes. with it. You're right. Um, my only concern is, and I'm playing devil's advocate to an extent here, is if we vote this evening, uh, and vote in the affirmative, what recourse do we have against CBS aside from... Not recourse, leverage. Leverage we have against CBS. The, open, the reopening of the special permit, because right. if we open reopen the special permit, that puts CVS at risk. risk. It does, and, and that puts it larger risk. Just a simple sign that they're, they're doing business there. Right. Okay. I can live with that. Um, I need to do a couple of motions, but before we go into a, an actual vote, does that sound palatable to everyone? Is that something we can all uh, move forward with and feel comfortable with this evening? I think we can. What we can do is we can continue to have an ongoing discussion about the property itself uh, at a time when it's a little bit more appropriate. I, I do not want to continue having discussions about this particular property without the owner and his attorney at least aware that those discussions are being had. Um, but can, can we choose a date now? I was going to say I'd be really like to put a time frame. December sixteenth yes. is so the only date it could be. So can actually. we choose December sixteenth? Then we will. Reopen the special permit, get the owner of the property there, and, and CBS. have CVS, and CVS at the meeting on December 16th. Yes. So let's yes. approve this for now. And well, get, approve that with the, con the third condition that they come to that meeting. But so what would still just help them? No, no, they can, they can go do all the signage changes. It's just another condition that they come to the meeting on December 16th. CVS or CVS, CVS. 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 And, CVS. And, yeah. and the building in the and the, and, yeah. and the owner. So they can go ahead and do their sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm okay with that. Okay. I just don't want. Yeah. But again, it sets up another vi violation if it's not followed through. Right, right. right. but we re but under but we are going to have to reopen. It's a both and, and I think it's warranted. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm okay with that. I like that solution. We we do need to try to make sure that. Uh, whoever comes from CVS is is the right person to mm -hmm. deal with these yeah. kind of issues. So we can write in yeah, with decision-making authority. Mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah. Yeah. And that that it's not manager. that it's not just <laughs> not, like the person at CVS who's in charge of signs, for instance. No, that no, no, wouldn't no. be helpful. Right. Well, or, be. or the manager of the store. It has right. to be. It has to be. An well, Gary, who was here at the, the first meeting, he's been dealing with CVS for many years, and I'm sure they has. I'm sure they're well aware of the situation and what's mm -hmm. going on and what is taking so long to get the permit. So I'm assuming they're not in the dark about right. it. But yeah. I assure you of that. Um, and, but he'll know the person that would have to talk to, and chances are it will be one of their lawyers that comes with them because that's what, you know they're a big corporation mm -hmm. and that's what they're going to do. So, um, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. I like Rachel's language with decision making. Yes, ability. absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. I like that. Okay, so <clears throat> just thinking this through through procedurally. So, I guess we can do it in one vote in that we will vote to approve uh, the application for special permit 3348 with the conditions as laid out and can you read those back to me uh, please? adding the directional sign and correcting the landscaping i i'll get the exact wording and mm -hmm. and and then the the language for this i actually need a little bit i heard various things so what would you like <coughs> other than attendance at the December 16th by a CVS um, official with decision, with decision with decision making responsibility so that would be the motion along with the vote. ownership along with and, the, the, and the property owner yeah. and our well no no and I, I think we need okay. a second motion if I could suggest and the second motion is to reopen the special permit yes and for December 16 and to um, have the owner of the property in CVS. Yeah, so we we'll need to so authorize that, the department to advertise that. Right, so the, so let's that, take the first vote right, first. And then so. we'll do the second one. Okay. All right, so we have a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 And so next we would motion to open special permit 3348. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> reopen special permit 3348 uh, to be advertised by the department and held at a public hearing on December 16th, mm -hmm. 2009. 2019. 2019. 2019. I'm looking at 29, 2009. <laughs> I'm looking at the decision. And, he, and to have um, property owner there mm -hmm. and CVS. There. And a representative from mm -hmm. CVS with de decision making authority. So moved to discuss can i get that ad in there yes to discuss to discuss violations of the special permit okay yes second all in favor aye aye, aye. good i'm happy with that thank you fantastic you don't have to come back unless you want to <laughs> <laughs> i gary may be here uh, thank I'm, you to, to those of you in the public for your input we do appreciate quick question Will we be able to view this, or will there be notes taken? It's, it's on yes, right on it'll, be on, uh, it'll be online, online by the end of the week. Okay. Great. Thank you, Great. Thank you all very much. Or so. Thank you. And, and you'll eventually get the written decision. Yeah. You'll get the right. written decision the written as decision well. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. That was positive. I appreciate everybody's input. I think that was a good discussion and a good outcome. Wanna transition? Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to close that portion of special permit 3348 to be reopened in a few weeks and move on to an update on the central school renovation project jen um and just just quickly uh, while people are walking out i see just okay. the usual thank transition you. you're welcome thank, thank you. you thanks thank you the thank next you. meeting i wanted to let you know apothka will be here mm -hmm. on uh on the 18th for a public hearing they are the uh, applicant who is proposing a retail use of marijuana facility that would be in arlington heights it's 1314 mass ave mm -hmm. the application is actually even though nova's agenda is not up yet <laughs> i just mm -hmm. wanted to let you know the application was actually posted as a news item on the arb's page so if you go to your page right at the top it says news item and all of the materials are posted there just from the applicant there's not any memo there's not any it just says basically the public hearing notice 
Uh, but they, since we've been receiving requests, because it's already been a published notice, I wanted yeah. to mm -hmm. make sure that it was, was posted. What's the, what's the sequence? Have they already gone to the select board? They went board? to the select yes. board. They have a host yes. community agreement. So they have that And now they there. come to the okay. board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where is it again? Where is it? It's uh, where Swifty Printing is currently located. Okay, so Swifty is only half the building. Are they taking the whole building? Or? No, the, the Swifty won't be there anymore. They're taking the whole They're building. taking over the building except for the bank ATM would still stay there. Oh. Yeah, so there's... That can't... So, well, we'll, we'll we talk about it at the that, hearing, but... That can't, but, um, that can't happen. But that, that's actually a separate tenant, technically. So there... We'll talk about it later. Anyway, the that's the property that we're talking about. So I just wanted to let you know for your... And all the viewers. Um, okay. That the, the, applicant, the application materials are posted because we posted the notice. Many people have contacted the office okay. to be able to view them. And so. are we meeting here? The meeting, I think I scheduled it in a, in a different location. It's not here. It's either one, it's one of our bigger spaces, yeah. so I will let you know. I, I haven't looked at the materials yet, yeah. but uh, are there any traffic or parking studies as there part of that? There will be a traffic report or, or you know, sort of parking utilization from my office, and uh, beyond that, we don't have a lot from the applicant. There's a good size so. parking lot behind us. It's pretty small. All right, so we'll talk about that yeah. at the next meeting. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that that was forthcoming because you were asking yeah. about other hearings coming mm -hmm. up. Um, Good. Okay. Okay. Because okay. I, I. So let's. Well, we're, we're going to talk about thing. future hearings, but let's talk about. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Let's clear. talk about uh, Central School. Right. So Central School. The update here is I wanted to give you a couple updates. One of them is just the schedule of the project, which is. It says Exhibit F because it was part, it was part of a an invoice from the architect, but I wanted to make sure that you had the current timeline of when things are happening. We're hoping to go out to bid basically next month um, and start getting the bids in and hopefully into in, enter into the contract early next year, and then all of the tenant moving around and the construction will begin, which we've reviewed at a prior meeting, but I wanted to just make sure that you knew where we were at. We're still on target for the same schedule that we've talked about in the past. Um, and then I wanted to get to um, discussing potentially an endorsement by this board for, uh, I spoke with Bond Council about the role of the board and ownership of the building and they thought it might be wise to have the board endorse the bond, what was bonded by the town. It actually was bonded by the town at town meeting. <laughs> so it's a bit, a bit in retrospect, but since we did, not, we did not do it, um, they thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to have it on the books. Um, it's not completely necessary because obviously the money has already been bonded by town meeting. We are in the process of going through all of the legal documents to ensure the bonding is um, accurate and correct and, and um, the town is not in any risk. What I provided to you is the report from the Capital Planning Committee to town meeting, which just simply outlines the the project itself and then the actual amount that was bonded is $8,055,000, which is under, if you look on this page with a spreadsheet directly from the financial plan, it is under planning, senior central, Senior Center Central School Renovation, $8,055,000, mm -hmm. which is the amount that is being bonded for the mm -hmm. project. And then on the last page in the packet that I provided to you is the budget, which goes back to where the what the $8 million covers, which was provided to the Capital Planning Committee, of course, as this process in order to budget the funding. So what I was... Um, hoping the board might do is vote to endorse it's really just an endorsement of the bonded amount by the town in support of the central school renovation project that's all that i was looking for i'm glad to answer any questions about the status of the project or any other details you have can we about. get copies of the pdfs of the uh, working drawings the drawings are actually on it's arlingtoncommunitycenter.org so it's, on, on it's online. It's also on the ARB page uh, in relationship to the properties that are managed by the town. Okay. Um, and then if you want to see the full sets of documents, which are not, the, the full entire sets are not uploaded, those are downstairs on the counter. They're very no, giant. Just the schematic design intent yeah, is Yeah, those are on arlingtoncommunitycenter.org. And then um, uh, the construction manager's budget. 
Uh, they, do they have that spelled that's, out somewhere? Um, that's also in this budget. I, we didn't get it in our package, did we? No, I'm giving it to you right now. <laughs> but I have given this to you, this was last year when we talked about the budget for the project. Um, it hasn't changed since last December. <clears throat> so the, the OPM, if that's what you're looking for? No, we'll just put a... Is that the one? The construction manager? Well, the construction manager, didn't they verify all the pricing for all the... They verified all the pricing. So, they, so do we have their worksheet and all that, all that stuff? I just want to look through that quickly. Um, I'm confused. The worksheet for... Well, when they submitted the budget. Yep. They would have had all the line items on. Yep. That's all. what this was, actually. This was Vertex reviewing the submitted budget. Vertex. Uh, so yeah, but this, this is two years ago. Um, it's from 2018. It's December of 2018, which is from, it, this is from the design development drawings. That's what we needed to do in order to submit to town meeting for the budget. The next time that we get a cost estimate will be when we have the full construction documents. So that's, that's on this schedule, actually. Um, I'm sorry, in this exhibit. The pricing set to cost estimator went out, or is going out this week. So when I have the revised pricing set, I'm glad to provide this board with a copy of that, if you're interested, or yes, if you are interested. Yeah, <laughs> we're possible. interested in that, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah so that's the okay. final, the final set is being priced. So this evening would just be endorsing. It's a just bond an endorsement of the bond. And can you say again how much the how much is the bond? Eight million fifty-five thousand. It's the eight point zero five six. Five five. It's eight. It's a. Uh, it's in the financial plan, which is in that packet. What the town bond is is eight million fifty-five thousand dollars. If you go to the spreadsheet under the item that says planning, mm -hmm. major repairs, eight million fifty-five thousand. They essentially round it up by a few dollars. <clears throat> and town meeting is already approved this. Town meeting already approved it. Spread. I don't see a um, a V phase here. I would. Usually when the bids come in. Mm -hmm. I see that. Excuse me? You saw it? So uh, mm -hmm. under item 1121, review pricing set and cost slash VE. Yep. So that happens the last two weeks in um, November. The VE phase between 1121 and 124. Mm -hmm. While they're doing the 100% CDs. Okay. I was looking. I was looking at next year. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. The reason I said eight oh five six. If you look at page twelve in the Harriton, the top paragraph, it says, "Are projected at eight point oh five six million." Yeah, I don't know why. That's their narrative. It's the capital planning committee's narrative. What they bonded was eight oh five five. Okay. So, <laughs> I and I, I don't I don't have an answer for that. Sorry. <laughs> it's this is just dr drawn and directly from the capital planning and, and report. And we're to just being asked to endorse to the bond endorse the bond to support the Arlington Central School renovation. What does it mean to endorse the bond? It just simply means that as an owner of the property, and really it's the town of Arlington is the owner, but since the redevelopment board, it's still an urban renewal property. We wanted to make sure that there's a support by the board for the project. I don't have any other vote by the board related to supporting the project other than my check-ins with you. We have never had a vote of any kind related to. So Can we not. say support rather than endorse? Endorse I think that's has fine. a different I, th meaning. I think that's fine. I don't think there's a specific. Endorse was my word. Oh, OK. Yeah. And we're not really endorsing the bond. We are in supporting or endorsing the bonding for the that bonding, amount. Yes. Well, exactly. this is why I say I think which has been done already. I would, which has already, already been done. I, I would yes. move yeah. that it's, we support the bonding of the central school and the amount designated by town meeting. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That works. Committee Thank updates. <laughs> um. 
If you want more information about the project, those are all the ways to find it. There is also uh, the Permanent Town Building Committee. That's where all of the conversations are now occurring by Vertex, the OPM, with the Permanent Town Building Committee. So if you have other questions about it, let me know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so committee updates. What I put into the agenda was a request that I would make some updates and then some of you might make some updates about committees that you are serving on. So the reps on different committees include the Zoning Bylaw Working Group is David, Master Plan is Andrew, and CPC is still Jean. And we're now CPAC. The by CPAC. The way. We changed our acronym. And then Rachel is on the Arlington Heights Committee, which has which is meeting tomorrow. The kickoff meeting is tomorrow night at five thirty p.m. at ACMI, which I will unfortunately miss <laughs> because I'm going to be in Atlanta for the next four days. Ooh. So would anybody like to go in her place? <laughs> I can't. Tomorrow? Mm -hmm. uh, what time? 5.30. Ooh. Yeah. All right, I'll see what I think. Can I? I'll send you the agenda Ooh. if you'd okay. like. Uh, I can't really. Uh. It, it, the, it's a short, it's only an hour, and yeah. there, it's she's going to send I'm, me. It's just basically setting up, and we've okay. already communicated about, you know. Right. I'm, I'm just coming up from the Taunton. Yeah. And, uh, it's a tough one to make. Yeah. 5.30 is tough. Lots of traffic mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. here and Taunton. It's reverse traffic, but still. It's mm -hmm. still no, it's bad traffic. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, well, you'll let Jenny know. But there's no obligation. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, send. I'll try my best to make it I'll there. I'll send you the information. If you send me everything, I'll, I'll yeah. swing by. Okay. Yeah. Since I live in that area. So they're just <laughs> yes. So they're just kicking off. Okay. They they have not started meeting yet. Yeah. The housing plan implementation committee. Their next meeting is on November thirteenth at seven. They've pretty much been meeting, trying to be <laughs> regular about meeting. I'd say it's like every two months, sometimes sometimes every month. Um, at this point, they're talking about the real estate transfer fee as a possibility of something that they want to propose at town meeting. I don't know if that will actually move forward. It would be in the form of a home rule petition, um, and it also requires some state legislation in order for it to actually work. Mm -hmm. And then a... Is that uh, rent control? No, it's a tax. No, it's a tax, yeah. Paid back to the town it's, it's for every, every sale. Oh. It's a, a, it's a fee. It's a fee. A tax. It's a it's a portion of a real estate transfer that would go towards affordable housing, and then as part of that, you need to have a municipal affordable housing trust fund set up in order to accept those funds. So the companion uh, piece that the committee has been exploring is the setting up of a trust fund, which is under Mass General Law Chapter Forty Four Fifty Five C. For those of you familiar with it already. Um, you probably know that it's it's basically an entity that could hold on to and keep funding for affordable housing year over year without it going back into in any way uh, the revolving or general fund. It seems um, like we should have that whether or not the transfer tax goes through. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, so those are the two things that that group has been talking about. Could we have them come and update us on that at some sure. point? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Maybe after their next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's see where that's going. I'd like to I'd like to discuss that as a board because okay. it'll ultimately come from us. So okay. I'd like to know where that's headed. <clears throat> I'm in, I'm intrigued, but uh, I think there are probably some questions we have for them about <clears throat> what it entails, how it'll be implemented, and what what the ask will eventually be. Okay. I, I guess I was told that it once went to town meeting and didn't pass, I don't know, because there was some dispute about who would get to control the money in the trust fund, mm -hmm. so I guess that would be something to lesson. try to Yeah, I think there are a lot of questions of about that that would have to be worked out. Do you know if any of towns does this? Lots of towns. Lots yeah. of towns do it, yeah. yeah so, um, and actually, Doug Heim is attending our next meeting with the committee on November 13th to talk about this oh, with me. Um, because I've actually set up a lot of them in many municipalities throughout the region um, in my former life, not now, don't worry. Um, so the uh, next one on my list is actually the Zoning Bylaw Working Group. Would you like to give a quick update? Um, the major update was at the last meeting we had um, voted to move forward with getting a consultant on board to 
do some of the work called for under the Heights Neighborhood Action Plan. And I believe that that has proceeded with the department. You mean the industrial zones? Yeah. Economic analysis of industrial zones. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we hired RKG actually yeah. after we had a number of very strong uh, proposals to review and the entire committee, I think, voted unanimously to hire RKG. They started doing their work, um, which is basically an analysis of um, finding ways to kind of um, reinvigorate the industrial zones, understand the industrial zones a little bit more, which was already explained in the master plan, but to kind of pick up where that left off mm -hmm. and see what kind of remaining opportunities are still available, but also to protect and preserve um, the economic uh, opportunities that are that's there right now um, and sort of a little bit of re-envisioning of the industrial spaces. How's that funded through the town or? That's funded by the town actually by an appropriation of town meeting. Okay. Um, so that was one of the that and then the design guidelines were funded by town meeting through appropriation. Has there been a discussion and I know this happened a while back of uh, hiring a consultant to look at all the various zoning districts up and down throughout town but really up and down the commercial corridors we haven't done that yet no okay. that was something that we were planning to do last year but we didn't have any consultant bid that's what that's what led to just the sign, <laughs> sign right guidelines. but there was an R, there was an rfp <laughs> and then okay steve's here he he remembers this too steve's on the same by the work steve revelak <laughs> uh steve revelak 111 sunnyside avenue yes the reason why there, there was a plan to the original rfp for the sign proposal involved Doing the sign bylaws and an examination of the uh, the business the business districts um, and nobody there were no takers mm -hmm. so we scaled it back to the sign to signs and there was a taker um, if I if I may ask a question I saw yes. a new RFP go out for the uh, residential guidelines have there been any any nibbles. It, there have been nibbles this oh. time yes so that that went out previously and no nobody. Nobody uh, bid at all, okay. actually, so it didn't go anywhere. So we reposted it, and um, okay. we've had some interest. The deadline is actually, I think, Wednesday of this week. So I'll, repo I'll report back mm -hmm. on that one. Mm -hmm. okay. um, for the next meeting, I will provide you with the schedule for the economic analysis of the industrial zone so that you know what's forthcoming. They were doing some amendments. They're also meeting with the Zoning Bylaw Working Group on December 4th at 8.30. That's actually kind of the kickoff meeting with the consultant. Um, so I'll have a better sense of the actual schedule and when you can anticipate they would actually come and talk with the board, which is something that I know they're planning to do. Um, the Master Plan Implementation Committee. You know better than I do. I haven't been able to attend many of their meetings because of timing and con scheduling conflicts. but. I mean, they, they meet quarterly. Their next meeting is on December 19th at 6. Um, typically when they meet, they're meeting ahead of a town meeting where they're meeting for a check-in on the implementation plan. Um, I don't really have a lot to report from that particular committee at this moment in time. I so. don't think there's much happening. There may be time to look at that committee's makeup, but some another, another including me. Another meeting. But that's another meeting. Uh, <clears throat> okay. And then CPA. Uh, Community Preservation Act Committee, we had our first meeting of the fall a couple of weeks ago. We got, I think, 12 applications, um, and we invited all of the applicants to put in a full proposal. The first application is just a preliminary proposal so that we can see whether we believe that they qualify for CPA funding, and so we can give them feedback and suggestions about what we would like to see in a final proposal. Mm -hmm. So um, all are in being invited back and all of them, or almost all of them, are being given suggestions about what to do about getting from the preliminary application to the final application. Um, the disappointing thing to me and the other members of the committee is we had zero applications for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So as you know, under CPA, there has to be at least 10% funding for each of the designated areas. So we will need to set aside at least 10% 
for affordable housing to be used in a later mm -hmm. year. So that was disappointing. Other than that, a number of applications for recreation open space and a number of applications for historic preservation. Uh, you know if there's any care was there any carryover from last year's budget that wasn't used in you know how it's like divided into quarters? Yes, I there, I don't remember how much there was some, but the point I was gonna make and thank you for that was because of the not very much carryover plus but some plus the amount we expect this year we think that there won't be a need to say no to anybody based on not having enough money. We may say no for other reasons or may cut them back for other reasons, okay. but it looks like we will have adequate money to fund the proposals at the amount that they at least request in the preliminary application. Oh, great. Good. Just to add on to this, um, four of those 12 were submitted by my department. I tried not to hold back this time. <laughs> um, so the- uh, Has somebody of, gotten back to you with comments? Yes, okay. yes, all wonderful feed, okay. great feedback, um, as always. So the municipal, we updated the historic, um, a number of historic property cards as part of the town's historic property inventory. Um, we were planning to continue doing that, but mostly just for municipally owned properties. We learned a bit of a lesson about updating private properties the last time around. Um, the um, other element that we're planning to pursue is an archaeological survey of the town, which was something that was recommended from the survey master plan. If you haven't looked at that survey master plan, I think it's actually a good um, follow up to the comments made by uh, Mr. Atwood this evening um, and also by Mr. Baldwin. Um, who spoke about why they're interested in preserving more recent structures and more recent <clears throat> history. The, the survey master plan actually outlines some interesting sort of by area of the town, town's development and areas that could stand for additional preservation and protection. Is that online? It's online. I'd be happy to donate the old bottle I dug up in my backyard a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so many things can come. <laughs> <laughs> if if um, that's the, the criteria. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The, the, the thing I thought that would most intrigue the board would was uh, the Minuteman bikeway visioning that we've proposed doing. So we have a sustainable transportation plan that we've kicked off. We have an advisory planning committee for that. We also have funding through town meeting and various other sources to hire a consultant. The consultant um, should be chosen in the next couple of weeks. Um, but we, we don't have any real deep dive into and also kind of a re-envisioning of the bikeway. But we have a lot of commentary that we've heard about bikeway usage, bikeway hours, um, improvements to the bikeway, all kinds of different things. And not to mention bike parking is important. I nominate board. David Watson. <laughs> David's like, wait, I didn't know about this. <laughs> um, it's not so a formal it's just, nomination. <laughs> it's just a proposal at this moment in time. but. Um, if we could have additional funding through CPA, I think that it would help us to get a better sense of the bikeway needs and some rules and regulations, potentially signage, a lot of other things. So I um, wanted to let you know about that. Talk to Jean. <laughs> oh, I, I think I, I should take back that we were inviting all of the applicants. I think one of the applicants, we were suggesting that they were not the right applicant. And... Uh, you know, maybe the right applicant could be submitting the proposal, but they weren't. So there may be one less proposal, hmm. final proposal than preliminary. I forgot about that. Sorry. Can I can I back up for a minute? Yeah. Can you tell us about the design guidelines and what's happening there? Uh, so we don't uh, basically we put it out to bid the first time around. Mm. We did not receive any responses at all. Okay. So we put it back out to bid. It's still out to bid. And then there are some, and, but and there is a there is a committee. There together are three people working on, who or a working group together who are on that. ready to go, but if and when the time comes, not okay. until we have a consultant on board and we have something to actually do. Okay. Um, but yes, that's kind of the status. Good. Good. Um, the last two items are Envision Arlington and the Open Space Committee. Envision Arlington technically. The two of us are serving on the standing committee mm -hmm. and also on the advisory committee. Yeah. Which hasn't happened in a while. I don't even remember hearing about a meeting in 
at least a year. So I was thinking that maybe we could get Julie Brazil to come to a meeting to provide a broader update about Envision Arlington. Yeah, I think some night when we don't have a whole lot a of lot heavy lifting, uh, it might be good to have her, Julie Brazil, come and a representative or two from the Housing Plan Implementation Committee. Okay. Uh, and maybe a more formal update on what the zoning bylaw working group has been mm -hmm. working on. Okay. Uh, I do appreciate the regular input from Steve and David, but I think a, a, an overview of all of their mm -hmm. what's all of their in progress would be a good a good use of our time. Okay. The last one is the open space committee, and technically Wendy um, is serving on behalf of the board. Wendy Richter. Mm -hmm. So I have not received any sort of update from her, but Emily Sullivan, who's one of my staff, also serves on the committee, and all I know is that they're working on securing funds to do an update to the Open Space Recreation Plan, which is due to expire. And that was years. one of the applications yeah, to, so they're, for CPA. They're hoping for CPA. Yeah, so <laughs> okay. that's, that's the update. Oh, I guess the other, on Envision Arlington, the survey for 2020 is going to include housing questions. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Good. That may be uh, important for this board to weigh, well, this board and a number of our subcommittees to, to weigh in on, particularly the, the Zoning Bylaw Working Group and <coughs> the Housing Plan Implementation Committee mm -hmm. and the, the, probably the Design Bylaw Group as well, since uh, all of those groups have sort of taken up <coughs> work of other committees. Yep. Uh, so that things aren't duplicated, but it would be good to have them all communicating to Envision Arlington what those questions should entail, what what kind of data we want to receive back. I think it would be helpful. So there are a lot of overlap, a lot of good people. Mm -hmm. so that can that can work nicely. Okay. Okay. Uh, number four: announcement, release of bike parking guide. Now this was voted on by town meeting, so we can't make any changes. Well, not, not the bike parking no, guide, no. but the bike parking. The guide the bylaws. Uh, the bylaw itself. The bylaw yes. itself. This is just a, yes. a companion document to help That's where I was going many people. That. And uh, we would love to do more of these types of things when, re when necessary to advise and guide applicants on what to do and what are some of the best things that we want to see. So we thought this was a great model. We really appreciated David's comments and feedback and, and other folks around this table who also provided feedback. Um, I just wanted to kind of showcase it and thank my staff, um, Dan Amstutz and Aaron, of course, and also Kelly Linema, who helped to pull this together. I'm open to any comments, however, if you have some like technical edits, I'm glad to make them. And maybe we don't necessarily have to do it here if they're extensive, but glad to take any other feedback. I thought, let me just say I thought it was terrific. I thought the, um, a lot of the graphics in the photos were really helpful in explaining things. I think it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful resource. I do have some suggested wording changes, which okay. I can email you can to send. you separately. Not many, okay. just a few. Okay. Thanks. Hmm. Yeah, I like it. Yes, Steve. Public, uh, public comment when you're ready for it. Okay, we'll get about the bike guidelines. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll allow it now. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, Steve Revelock, 111 Sunnyside Avenue, and for the purpose of this discussion, I've uh, been using a bicycle as my primary mode of transportation for about six years. Typically, ride about 100 miles a week, and I also park, have to park it at times. Um, <clears throat> Overall, I, I think the, the guide is wonderful. You, you really did a great job. Um, and you know, I, I, I commend you for the, for the effort. Um, I liked the examples of what constitutes a good versus a not so good uh, bicycle parking area or bicycle parking facility, um, especially the, the pictures that were taken in town. Um, I've locked up at several of those, and I generally agree with the assessments. Not, not it, it's not in not so much a good versus not good, but what would make them better. Um, and one of the things I've just kind of come to believe over time is that if you don't, if a person who um, has who's never ridden a bicycle and is not in the habit of locking one up. They need to be shown. They need to be told what to do in terms of, you know, the rack needs this much clearance from a wall, or should be oriented a given way. And the fact that you, the guide has a lot of examples of that with, you know, measurements. You know, leave this much space here, leave that much space. I, I think it's great, and hopefully, um, you know, 
as um, more of more bike parking is installed in town, this will, you know, it, there'll, there'll be some improvements. Um, so the um, the last one other example I liked in particular were um, although we don't have them in town were the corral parking systems where you basically take uh, a parking space and you put it put a cage in there that holds you know eight to twelve bicycles. Um, I they struck me as being a practical way to kind of retrofit bicycle parking into an area that was really designed to accommodate automobiles. And they're also a really good illustration of how space efficient bicycle parking it can be. So, um, yeah, great job. <laughs> you know what? I was thinking about that. I, this is not one of my wording changes, and it's not, it's not related to the guide. But it would be interesting for the town to set some of those up for town meeting next year, just outside oh, the yeah. town meeting, maybe the one block on the other side of Jason Street and the one block on the other side of Mystic. Pleasant Street, they can do some of those. So I think that would be a nice thing for the town to think about next year. For, for Town Day. For, for Town Day. For, for multiple um, different... That's what I meant, yeah. Town Day. Yeah, okay. yes. yeah I think that's, that's a great idea worth <clears throat> Mentioning to whatever the Town Day committee is going to be interested <laughs> in. you got to get in there early. I wish you're not going to give a spot. <laughs> okay, can I just make one really nitpicky graphic <laughs> comment? On the, um, it's interesting to me that on the front cover, it almost looks like an example of the not to do because you actually want the bike, the U to be where the frame is, mm -hmm. right? If yeah. I'm reading the correctly, mm -hmm. so you're, I just you're right. I, sure. I might just update that graphic <laughs> and not be nitpicky. I'm going to be nitpicky. In my <laughs> that's a good comment. That's pretty, that's, um, that's pretty obvious. Sorry. Um, well, the bike is also not locked to the it's rack. It's not locked. So. I understand. We don't necessarily need um, to show lock. It's and I understand it's just a graphic, so, but... It's in motion. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, I wanted to express my appreciation to the staff. I also think it's a it's a great job, and I think it's <laughs> going to be very helpful um, to uh, people who are uh, doing development in town, to employers, to the schools, um, to people doing events in town, and... Uh, I uh, hope that it is widely distributed. Um, I would like to um, see it distributed in some way um, to the existing larger residential and commercial properties um, to give them ideas about how they might incorporate bike parking into their buildings if they don't already have it or, or to improve their existing bike parking. Because I'm sure a lot of the older structures in town just don't have don't much or, or anything. Yeah. Um, and I think this provides some good guidance and might give them some ideas that would, you know, perhaps attract mm -hmm. some new, new tenants or new businesses. Yeah. I was going to do sort of a news notice once we were done with this, you know, just to announce that it's available mm -hmm. and ready for view. But I think maybe a special letter to certain property owners in town would be a good follow-up. Definitely. Okay, sure. Thank you. Good. All right. Uh, meeting minutes, 923, 10, 7, 10, 21. Um, do you want to do the meeting schedule? The schedule. Oh, let's do the meeting schedule. That. I missed that. <coughs> yeah, let's do that first. So I, I just a couple notes. I mean, but obviously it's not our, t you know, it would be great if we could do the actual, you know, first and third Mondays of every month, but that's almost impossible given holidays. Um, also, it's still at 7.30, but I am open to a change to that. We used to meet at 7. We went to 7.30. I'm not sure that we need to do that, but I just wanted to put it out there. Um, and then uh, the other thing is I put in here the town meeting evenings, which includes April 27th and the 4th. It could potentially include the 18th, just as a heads up. And then if we went to a special town meeting in the fall, which was what we've been talking about doing in relationship to other warrant articles for zoning, uh, that would likely be December 7th. But I, because you I said dis December? December 7th oh. of 2020. Um, sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to ask, what one date, I think October 16th was a Friday. I think it might have been the 19th. Oh. All right. Just 
October 16th is a Friday. Okay, 19th then. <clears throat> and only one meeting in September? Usually we have one in August. And we have two in August. September is rough. September. There's a, okay. a lot of holidays going on. So okay. if you wanted to meet on a day other than Monday for an additional meeting that month, I we think. We can just we can do that. We can maybe planning, talk planning about planning it in July or August. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's also two yeah. August meetings. Right, I, don't I know saw that. that you necessarily yeah. want to meet right. twice in August or the week of July 4th. Mm hmm No. Okay, it's a good maybe. start. I like to keep the seven, uh, 730. 730, yeah. It makes it easier to make. I, I don't know what the rest of the board feels like. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Seven yeah. is fine. I just wanted so to check in. Yeah. We, we kind of annually yeah, I have do no a little check-in on this. So, so if you have a preference, <clears throat> let's go with it. Finally. It makes it easier, much easier to get here. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I, I wonder if <clears throat> on nights, uh, other nights where we have a lot going on, we can make a motion in advance to bump it up to 7. But okay. in general, I think leaving it at 730 yeah. would be a good idea. Okay. So, okay. I'll correct the October 16th date to the 19th. Okay, so we'll move to adopt this schedule. So motioned. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do, Aye. We, do we need to adopt the bike parking guide or not? I thought that's done already. No, it's no. not. Well, the bylaw. No, I, the bylaws. We adopted the bylaw. The, bylaw. the, bylaw. the, the, the guide the, is just well, a The guide is staff okay. product. Okay. Or we. Endorse. We can endorse it. We can endorse, <laughs> we can endorse it. We're supportive. I would, I would, once I would the endorse is, it. Once the cover is fixed. <laughs> and, and the wording, and the wording, the nitpicky wording yeah. things are. No, I think, I think, I think endorsing it will be fine. Uh, if no one wishes just to make a motion, I'll move on to meeting minutes for real this time. Okay, we have. Uh, September 23rd. Any comments? Yeah, one comment. Go ahead. Uh, it's on page 90, well, it says 95 mm -hmm. of 114. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And near the end, it says, uh, Mr. Lau pointed out the design elements were different uh, on the plans in both buildings. That's not quite what I said. I said that I agree with uh, Rachel as far as making them similar so they both buildings look alike. But I liked the other buildings trim were better, but either I way think it was both fine. Both of our points were, were just that we wanted them to speak to each other more. Correct. Pick one. Yes, and you right. picked one, and I picked right. one, and that's all I want to say. <laughs> either one is fine. Either one is fine. Just pick yes. one. I like having two um, architects on the board. <laughs> so the other thing with the minutes here, and it, it's repeated in the other minutes, is. They have the chair, you, moving a lot of them. The chair moved to approve, the chair moved to approve. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you actually made all those motions. What I've been doing is yeah. I will say, so we have a motion mm -hmm. to, and then Ken will say, so moved. So right, so this is technically incorrect, because you're yeah. not, right? But he's not seconding, he's not the second, somebody else seconds. No, 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 what I'm saying is, Andrew is not actually making Andrew is suggesting the motion. Suggesting the motion. So oh, all of yeah, these need to Yeah, I did notice these, that in all of them. All of these yeah, need yeah. to be changed to... to the language to, um, is... Uh, right. Yeah. right. So, so for example, it says the chair moved, Ms. Delisle motion to... So mm -hmm. these need to be changed because you could say the chair suggested... Suggested. Right? Mm -hmm. So there are yeah. at least three... Or four places. Quite, quite a few. I'll, there, I'll there are many to be changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we could They're make that change across the board. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll I'll move. It, it'll set help. I'll move the move. I'll move. <laughs> so <laughs> so I make a motion with those changes that we adopt. So, well, I, sorry, oh, I have one more. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so on the the first page, so page ninety five, the bottom of um, the second paragraph, where I'm talking about the sign band. Um, where it says yes. Ms. Zemberry suggested leaving up a sign bin. That yep. comment was actually relative, um, not to them changing the signage in the future, but relative to sh having a clear um, differentiator between the residential and the business entry. So okay. enough of a sign ban so that the business could be signed. Um, at the bottom of the paragraph with that starts with the color of the facade, is that the? Uh, it's agenda? at the bottom of the paragraph that starts with the chair. Then introduced the first agenda item. Oh, I'm sorry, oh. I'm in the wrong one. Okay. Yep. 
last sentence. Suggested of that leaving enough of a sign band. Okay. Indeed. Yeah. So instead of in case there is a change to the signage in the future, the intent, what we spoke about was having a um, clear differentiator between the residential and the and the um, business entry. So enough of a sign band so that they could actually sign the business entry because there wasn't. Okay, great. Um, an that opportunity for that Okay. currently. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can I now move we adopt the minutes of September 23, 2019 with those amendments? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on to <clears throat> October 7th. These were pretty heavy. Um, a lot happened that night, but I think... I will do the same thing with this one, though. It says move to, yes. move to, so I will change all those. I didn't have so, any substantive changes, but I'm sure. I only had one, and it was on the wording of, um, on page 100, the top paragraph, mm -hmm. um, where it says Miss Simberry um, talks about extracting some of the wealth. Um, what I yeah. what I said was <laughs> to redirect the wealth in our community to our own commercial base rather than to our surrounding communities. Yes. Redirect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's better. Okay. <laughs> oh, and um, that's great. Thank you. You're it's, welcome. It's important to look for your name in each one of these to too. make sure that. <laughs> That's right. I know. I have to look for the chair instead of my name. <laughs> I did notice that uh, Jennifer Seuss's name is misspelled on page 100 as okay. well. I highlighted that. Um, I'm seeing oh, it again yes, now. I see that now. Mm -hmm. um, not Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <but laughs> school committee member Seuss. Perhaps she is a doctor. My apologies she, she to is Jennifer a, right now. She does have a PhD. Yes. Yeah. yes. So she is Dr. She Seuss. is Dr. Seuss. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, not, but not that one. Not uh, the not, Argonne. Not the Theodore. <laughs> okay. Any other comments on the 7th? The 7th? October 7th. Mm -hmm. These are from October 7th. Mm -hmm. oh, I looked at the wrong month. <laughs> I move to adopt with modifications. Discussed. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Abstain. I no, wasn't there. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure you're not he's listed not in attendance. I'm not <laughs> no, no he's, he's right. listed as absent. Yep. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. October twenty-first. Any comments? I think you have the same thing with the, the same thing. Yeah, I'll do the same the here. I have no other comments. Okay. okay. Yep. Move to adopt uh, October twenty-first. Second. With changes. As amended, yeah. Mm -hmm. As All in favor. Aye. 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 How did, I'm, I'm looking at the last, next to last paragraph here, how did that MIT symposium it forum went Very go? well. I'm still awaiting the sort of debrief from the students. Mm -hmm. They said that they would provide us with a summary of everything that they collected. Um, we had about maybe 20 people there, um, mm. including Don attended. Mr. Seltzer was also in attendance that good. evening, um, and David was there, and uh, I think it was a very good conversation. A lot of people seemed very engaged, very excited to talk about this this section of East Arlington that doesn't normally get discussed, it's, and um, yeah. transportation was definitely the biggest issue, but also people were interested in the other topics that were around the room, but transportation probably got the most attention hmm. that evening, so it was very right. informative. Uh, we had um, a lot of town meeting members in attendance, and the state rep was there, Garbally, um, and I thought it went very well. And, and I see that the board they're, the they're still planning to come on the 4th. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Was there any talk about the cemetery? No. Yeah. Not, that, not that I'm aware of, but yeah. it, there was a whole table of people. There were, there were people who were talking about open space well, and there was, other kind there, of issues. We, uh, I, I was in the group that was focusing on, on the Leahy site, mm -hmm. and we had a little bit of discussion about the difficulty of activating that as a commercial corridor because one side of the street is a cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the question of why the cemetery has two bus stops. <laughs> a lot of people die. What's the problem with cemeteries? People dying to get in. 
It's a valid question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's certainly something to observe. All right. Um, okay. Open forum. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak this evening? Mr. Seltzer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. I just have a question regarding 887 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, when it came before the board for review, it was presented as having commercial retail on the first floor. Uh, that has not come to pass, and I understand that there are alterations going on now for a different usage, uh, which will probably have very different needs, particularly in regard to parking and traffic. So my question is, uh, what is the process at this point? Does it come back before the board for review to see if there are any changes needed um, because of an entirely different use for which you originally approved? So you approved mixed use. Mm -hmm. it, is a pr it is going to be a preschool on the first floor. <coughs> and we have followed the board's guidelines with, in relationship to a Dover review process mm -hmm. um, in concert with inspectional services and also with input from town council. And now they are proceeding with, um, as noted, there are renovations taking place on the site. I would be glad to share any other details about um, from what I understand about what is being put into the space and in general if there's any other questions that people have about the property. I don't. No, I don't. Can we, so it's a nonprofit preschool? Yes. Okay. I think it's a good use for the area. I just think that uh, it's the kind of thing where it is quite different from what was presented for your review. You did discuss a lot about the parking and traffic situation in your initial review, mm -hmm. and I think it probably warrants at least hearing what they're doing and seeing what opinions you have as to whether any changes might be needed because of this different use. Um, I mean, there is certainly a concern that the traffic parking is so much different in that there's going to be a heavy flow um, at the same time that there's going to be a lot of traffic uh, for the high school in the morning, um, unlike regular retail. And also maybe concerns about uh, the construction that's going to be going on for the next few years and Skyward Court. Um, its traffic pattern is going to be changing over the years and how this impacts this site. And just the simple question of, um, you know, where are kids going to be dropped off and where is the parking for that and the safety issues. Uh, you know, the, I have a, a daycare center at the bottom of my street and uh, it's very heavy usage as far as parents dropping um, their kids off and they take a good amount of time while they're in there. And I don't know how that's going to interact with the high school traffic at the same time of day. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Address? Any other comments from members of the board? Seeing none, I would take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.